Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and today we are going to be looking um, more into the React testing library uh, by Kent Dodds. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how to test um, an Axios Ajax call. So we're going to look into uh, how to mock out that call, how to uh, deal with some asynchronous aspects of this of this test, because um, with Axios, you're you're always waiting for a result, so you're waiting for the promise to resolve. And we're going to look into how we can test that. Um, if we look at the uh, testing library's website, they give an example. I think it's down here in the uh, example section. And they sort of go through an example that's very similar to the one we're going to be looking at today. Um, they do it via click, whereas we're just going to do it uh, when the component gets rendered. But it's all the same sort of ideas. So if you were look ever looking at this and not quite sure what was going on, we're going to step through it uh, step by step today. So let's take a look at the code. So we're going to work fully in uh, the code editor here. And the component we are going to test is over here on the left. So it's a functional component that takes in a URL as a prop. So whatever sort of URL string that we want to, um, to fetch. And the first thing we do is we set up um, using the use state hook. Um, some uh, state that starts out as null and eventually it will contain the data from the fetch request. So we also have a function that we can call anytime we want to modify that. So when this function is rendered, we want to fetch the URL and we can use the use effect hook for that. So this code looks pretty complicated and I'm thinking of doing another short follow up video after that steps through all this. But all you basically need to know here is that this use effect hook performs the Axios request. And when it gets the result, it calls set data and puts the response data into that data. So if that all works, we've sort of got two scenarios to deal with here. We've got when there is not yet data, so it starts out as null, comes down here. And when it's not data, we're going to return uh, just a little span that says loading data. Um, otherwise, so when we do have data, we're going to um, print out the greeting. So the, the URL we're fetching, um, I'm just sort of making an assumption since it's play data that it has a greeting, um, and we'll render that into the span. So we're going to look at how to write a test to test these different scenarios here. So I've already set up a file, uh, fetch.test.js. And I've already just put the, the uh, imports here, 90% uh, because I can never remember, so I, so I don't look too bad on video. But um, we always need React because that's what we're testing and we're writing some JSX code, so that's a given. We need to import three different functions from the React testing library. Uh, the ability to render out the component we're testing, a cleanup function that we can call after each test, or better said, uh, jest will call for us after each test, and wait for element. As I mentioned, we're, we're testing asynchronous code, so it might not be available sort of at the, test the, at the time the test runs, so we need to wait for it to appear. Some custom um, expect uh, testers to make it easier to test um, components. We are importing Axios, and I'll explain why I called it Axios mock in a little sec. Um, and then we're importing the, the component itself that we're working through. So let's start writing our test. So uh, it um, fetches and displays data. <clears throat> and we need to make it async because uh, we've got some async await happening inside of here. And we'll just close that off and okay. So our test should pass because because uh, there's it does nothing, so that's that's good so far. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take care of this cleanup. So just injects a function called after each that we can use globally. So we're going to say after each test, call this cleanup function. So that is done. All right. So what we want to do now is <clears throat> let's let's start by rendering out this uh, component and putting it. Um, some helpers that it returns um, into a variable to use later on. So we will say const uh, some stuff we're going to destructure equals 
render the fetch um, component. And if you remember, the fetch uh, receives a URL as its um, prop. So, okay, we're getting some nice errors over here on the right. That's good. So we'll set up a URL and we'll just say that it's going to visit slash greeting, which obviously doesn't exist, but uh, that's what we'll use for testing. And we'll pass that in as the prop. Okay. So, cool. It's, it's working again. Um, so when we render, so render comes again from the React testing library. Um, when we render this function, it will return us a number of uh, sort of ways we can reach in and uh, interact or or look at the whatever was rendered. So we are going to use a function called get by test ID. Okay. So what this allows us to do is if any of our HTML implements the uh, data, I believe it's just called test ID um, prop, we can use this to access the span so that we can take a look inside of it and make sure that it's it's doing things correctly. So we'll just call this, uh, this is the loading span. So we can come back here now and we can write our first expect. So we're gonna expect that when we say get by test ID loading, that, uh, so this returns us the element and we can say to have uh, text content. So this to have text content comes from this library here, which is why we can do that. So when it's loading, we expect it to have the text content loading data dot dot dot. Okay, so we'll put that into a string and let's see if it's working. Okay, it appears to be working um, because when it goes through the first time, it actually renders this out before the use effect ever runs. So the first time it goes through, it will definitely show loading data no matter what. And that's why it is working. So now we want to move on and we want to test that the Ajax call is performed correctly so that when we have some data, um, it renders out inside of this span here. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll just set up another uh, data test ID and we'll call this one resolved. So this will exist when we have data. But we need to actually make Axios um, perform an AJAX call or an HTTP request. And during tests, we don't actually want it to go across the internet and fetch some data because A, that'd be slow. B, whatever website we're pulling data from might get angry. Um, so what we're going to do is mock out Axios. And uh, also, slash greeting wouldn't work anyways because uh, that doesn't exist. So we're going to mock it out. And the way you mock stuff out in Jest is that you can, so I'm going to open up my code here and uh, I already have a folder inside of the SRC called underscore underscore mocks underscore underscore. So if you ever want to mock out a module, you can put it inside of the mocks, special mocks folder and give it the same name. So we'll call it Axios because that's what it is. And we need to sort of export a mocked or faked version of this Axios module. So we can say uh, export default and we'll do an object. And if you look how Axios is used, it uses, uh, it calls the get function. So we just need to make sure, because right now we're only using get, that we uh, implement that. So we will have it return a jest function. So that's like a faked out um, mock version of a function that we will have it uh, resolve the value to something. So whenever you call this, it sort of auto resolves and it's gonna have this value. So we're gonna have data and then right now we'll just put our data as empty. Okay, so just close this again because we don't need it. Give us some space. So here's our sort of mocked out version of Axios. So now in the test, when we import Axios, it's not actually importing the real Axios because it detected that mocks folder. So I just named it Axios mock um, because just to make it clear that it's not the real one, it's the fake one. So 
what we can do is we can override sort of the global mock resolved value and give it a custom one just explicitly for this test. So we can do that by saying axios mock dot get and uh, get is like this fake function here. And we'll say uh, mock resolved value once, I believe it is. So just the next time it's called one time return this special value. So we'll have data and we'll have the greeting in that data say uh, hello there. And uh, remember that this is expecting a greeting field to exist. Um, so that's why I set up the data that way. Okay, so moving on. The first time it renders through, it's going to say loading content, but then it's the use effect kicks in and it's going to perform this Axios call, um, which is going to resolve right away because we've mocked out Axios and it's going to update the state with whatever it was returned. That modifying the state will force a re-render and it will come back down again. And this time we will have data. So it's going to return this last one here. So if it all worked as planned, we should be able to find this span by uh, the data test ID and make sure that it has the correct value. So we got a little bit of an issue and that issue is it doesn't appear right away. It, um, because it's all asynchronous and we want to wait for that element to appear on the screen. So that's why I had this imported up here, wait for element. So what we can say is we are waiting for the uh, resolved span. That's what we'll call the span that we're going to get. And we're going to wait for that element. And what you do is you pass in an arrow function here that needs to return the element. So we'll use get by test ID again. And I believe it was called resolved. Okay. Oh, I messed up one thing. It reserves a promise. So we want to await for this thing to resolve. So now we can come down here and we can expect that the resolved span uh, has to have text content. So because we mocked it out right here, we can just copy that down. Cool, and it still works. So let's add a couple more tests that are specific to um, making sure that the mock was called correctly. So what we can do is we can say, we expect that the Axios mock dot get to have been called times. Cool. So we expect it to have been called one time. And we can also say axios mock dot get to have um, been called with. So this is like um, when you called get, what arguments did it receive? So it received, remember we passed in this URL greeting and that's what we passed to axios dot get. So we expect it to have been called with the URL that I had popped into a variable up here. And that's the whole thing. Our test is working from start to finish. And just to go over this now that all the code's in place. So the first thing we did is after import everything and cleaning up after each test, we made sure that we're, we've got an async function so that we can use a wait down here. We mocked out the resolve value of our axios.get call to just be this hard-coded data. We set up our URL and we rendered our fetch component passing in that URL as a prop. In return, we got our get by test ID to dig into the whatever was rendered and find those elements so that we can test that they have different attributes or text values. And we test it at the beginning that when there's no data yet that it says loading data. Then we wrote some code to wait for the resolved element to appear. So as it triggers the use effect, which updates the state, um, it will re-render itself and eventually it will display that span on the screen. And then once we have this span because we awaited it, uh, we can check that it has the right text content and that uh, 
our Axios get was called once, receiving the URL that we expected it to receive. And that's the test uh, from beginning to end. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, right after this one, I'm going to record another one that goes into a little bit more detail about how this whole use effect thing works and why I set it up the way I did. Thanks. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.